or frozen. What? Yeah, can you see me now? Hi, everyone. Okay, I see the chats. Can you hear me okay? Hi. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. <laughs> okay, I'm using a different mic that's in front of me, so I'm so glad you can hear me. Hi, everyone. Brandon's in here. He's helping me in case I have any issues with, you know, the microphone or the camera and stuff. How's the lighting, by the way? I wonder if I should close the shade or something. Babe, how's the lighting? Is it? Should I move back? <laughs> How's that? <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, guys. So, um, first of all, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it might be an awkward time for some of you. It's currently 1230 in Hawaii. And I know like just off my off the top of my head, it's like 3.30 on the West Coast and then 6.30 on the East Coast, yeah? If you are not from either of those coasts, can you let me know what time? Yeah, 11.30 in London. Cool. 11.30 p.m. or a.m.? Oh, 8.30. Good morning. Okay, so yeah, um, <laughs> you guys are here because... I announced in my gratitude newsletter that I wanted to start experimenting with live morning chats. And honestly, I have, you know, if you guys enjoy this, you have Brandon to thank for it. He's been telling me to do this for a really long time. And you know what? He honestly sold it to me when he was like, babe, you don't have to edit it. Like after you stream, it'll just go live. <laughs> and, I was, and I think that's what really tipped me over the edge. But um, yeah, cool. <laughs> You guys are so amazing. I was so nervous because I'm like, no one's going to show up. But even if no one showed up, it was like, I still don't have to edit. And even if one person showed up, it's still I get to interact with you live. So I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you for making the time. And um, if you just happen to stumble in here by chance, um, sign up for my newsletter. Because when I do like fun little experiments like this, that's where I'll probably announce it first. So if you're interested, I'll have a link down below. Okay, I'm going to try to be good about talking and also checking the chat so I can go back and forth. Yeah, 530 in the middle of the States. So cool. Okay, ooh, Italy. Wow, this is so cool. <laughs> okay, what did I want to say? Um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to start getting ready. And then I want to go over... This box of stuff. Okay, so this has been sitting next to me for probably since the beginning of this year. And if you guys are familiar with my previous empties videos, I used to like keep track of like every product from the day I opened it to when I finished it and I had a whole spreadsheet. But um, yeah, as, as fun as that was when I used to do that, it's just, you know, <laughs> it, it didn't become a high priority for me. I found myself kind of rotating through the products in my collection and I stopped take, uh, like keeping such meticulous track of everything. So I hope you'll forgive me in that. But I still wanted to share with you uh, my thoughts on these products. So yeah, let me start doing my face first because I think... I feel a little better. I don't know if it's the new camera or what. I just feel like I look so blotchy and unkept. Okay. So let's see. Okay, Panama. Wow, you guys are really everywhere. This is so cool. Maybe I, start, I need to start memorizing some other time zones besides um, California and New York. <laughs> okay. I am um, just using what's new, my Glossier Skin Tint. I'm actually rotating through a few other bases right now. You guys know I talked about the Ayuna Velo last week, but this one has um, sun protection. I'm not going outside today, so I'm really going to save this because 
you saw the price tag on this, right? So <laughs> there's that. And then I really want to um, use this up. This is the Kosa's Tinted Face Oil. And it's a little bit light on its own. So I'm going to just start mixing a little bit into my skin tint just so I could use it up, you know? So let's do that. Cool. How was your weekend? Did you guys do anything cool, fun, special? What did we do? Nothing. We didn't do anything. It was just a very relaxing time for me. Uh, Brandon played volleyball as he always does. I just didn't want to go outside this weekend. <laughs> so I was home. Uh, just watched Netflix and was just online. Oh, okay. You worked. Is that normal? Do you always work on the weekends? Okay, what shade do I use? Oh, so this is shade four. It's a bit light. As you can see, like, I really have to get into close to my hairline to blend it. <laughs> um, and like, it dries quickly. So I do have to move kind of fast. Realize I'm not very good at multitasking. It's final season. Oh, finals. Good luck on your finals. Okay. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah, happy Mother's Day, you guys. For those of you that are mothers or have mothers, so all of you, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> Baby, you played volleyball? <laughs> so what's funny is you guys are going to see how long everything actually takes, right? Because when I film morning chats and I start doing one thing, like my brows actually take a lot longer than I keep in the video because, you know, I cut through that. I don't really want to show you from beginning to end just to save you some time. So I'm like, why is this taking so long? Why is it taking so long? But this is normally how long it takes. So there's that. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, see, close up, it doesn't look too good. It's like a little bit patchy and dry on my chin, even though I moisturized a ton. How unfortunate. I was really looking forward to this. And now I feel like my face and my neck are totally different colors. Okay, we're going to move on. I'm just going to put on some concealer. Let's see. Good morning. All righty. Okay. Next. Concealer, this is Glossier's Stretch Concealer in their new line, the G8. Yeah, before there were only five shades, and now there are, I think, 12. And it's not my favorite, but it's what I have. And so I'm going to use it. Uh-huh. Eric and June, good luck on your finals. Do you guys have any questions for me? <laughs> I feel like I should be talking about something right now while I put on my makeup. But I um, was just going to go with the flow until I start talking about the products. Oh, my gosh, Tiffany, I love that concealer still. I was just trying to, you know, save some dollars and just... Buy, I bought this because I had Glossier credit, but that's my favorite. What shade did you get for the RMS? Okay. Shade 11. I'm pale. Good morning. 
my goal is to become a 44. <laughs> I think I'm a 33 right now. Okay. Let's move on to... Um, I'm going to use some blush. I'm going to use Curious. This is the one that I want everyone to have, but it's um, it's been discontinued. And it's like this nice little peachy. You know what? If you have, if you've tried Glossier's Cloud Paint and Dusk Beam, actually, I think it's Beam. It's very similar. I just find that I like the RMS formulas better. Um, I, on my skin at least, I think Cloud Paint, once it's on me, it's really hard for me to blend. And I've definitely gone way heavy handed in the past and ended up looking kind of clownish and I couldn't undo it. Whereas this one, because it's creamier, um, I think if I accidentally use too much, I can either blot it off with a tissue. Oh, sorry to interrupt. It's okay. Or um, I can, yeah, just add in concealer or something. What are you doing out here? I figured I could read the comments to oh, you and for you. I would love that. So that you can focus on doing your... Thank you so much. Yeah. So if you have questions and stuff to say, just say it in the chat and then I'll make oh, sure to read it out. Thank you. You guys, oh, there's so much more people than I thought. I'm so moved right now. Oh, Tiffany says you're so thoughtful. <laughs> I asked him to do this for me yesterday <laughs> and you weren't that excited. But I was like, do you think you could sit, be next to me and then do this? I don't, I don't but I know you have, a, you have a lot going on though. Yeah. Brendan has a lot going on. So thank you for the offer. Can I see what I look like on your computer? Yeah, it's a little bit kind of white, not enough warmth. Oh, interesting. It looks very different. I'm very red on this monitor. Yeah. And I feel like Yeah, mine does. Should I open up that? Do you want, should I open up that blind? Uh, let me try. Okay. Hi Julia. Okay. I'm sweating guys, I'm sweating. Turn the AC on. Yeah, maybe in the bedroom. Yeah. So I want to show you this mirror because um <laughs> We have this tradition where, you know, when we go to China for Christmas, when we go to Shanghai, we do this thing where like Brandon and I and Gail, Chad and all the kids, we kind of split up like boys versus girls. And then we go and like pick out stocking stuffers for each other. And I think in the store we were at, it was like a, a store similar to Muji. And I remember um, I walked by this mirror and I was like, oh, if, of anything in the store, I wouldn't mind having that mirror. And I think Gail overheard me. And I think she slipped it into your cart, babe. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I've had this since Christmas and it lights up. Yeah, I don't really use the light too much, but I just like, my favorite part is this little tray on the bottom here. So if I wanted to, I can put products like that. Cause sometimes I like to do my makeup when I'm in the dining room dining table um, rather than in the bedroom. So it's nice to carry over. And I never use this either, but I like that I have the option to. This little part comes out and it's one of those 5X mirrors, you know, if you wanted to pick out every little hair on your eyebrows. I don't use this because I just imagine how dangerous this would get with me, like studying my pores. So I don't, I don't even open, <laughs> I don't even open Pandora's box. It's not good for me. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Babe, are you hot too? I uh, turn on the AC in here. I know, but are you hot or is it uh, just me? I think you're just a little nervous. Oh. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to do my eyebrows. Um, I do really miss being in Korea for this reason because, you know, when I would just like walk down the street and go get my brows microbladed, but now being here, uh, the sun and everything, I think it's definitely fading, even though I'm like, I put sunscreen on my eyebrows. So I feel like the gaps are becoming more visible and it's about time I need to start filling them in again.
Why are you looking at me? Oh no, I just wanted to... How's the lighting? Um, I think what it is is the monitor is blocking some of the lighting. Oh. So when you when you get down, that's why it looked like you know only the top half of your face was. Yeah, I see what you mean. So it's okay. We'll figure this out as we go. Yeah. The light is pretty bright right now, but it's actually kind of gloomy today. Yeah. Weirdly, right? Yeah. It's probably good. If it's okay. too bright, it might wash you out even more. That's true. You know what's so annoying is when I film videos with Brandon and we use the ring light because he has so much, so many more contours on his face. Like we'll match up the lighting to him. You know, he's got the cheekbones and the nose bridge and the double, the big eyes and everything. And then as soon as I get next to him, it's just I'm white. Like you just see eyeballs. <laughs> it's just flat and white. But oh, what's it like to have <laughs> cheekbones and a bridge? I think I think I still need to figure out the lighting stuff it's not easy yeah so it's not your fault i just don't know how to do it yet okay i see some questions babe oh shoot you should be reading them it's not showing up on mine oh really yeah i literally just have tiffany's comment and then my comment oh okay what's I'm let's refresh. see okay do you guys have any plan to visit la yes we don't have a date yet but my brother um just moved there very recently so I'm sure we will have a lot more reason to go. And right now they're staying at an Airbnb while they're figuring out um, their housing situation. So I'm sure once they're settled in and once we um, are able to afford a trip, I would love to go back to LA. Ugh. I haven't used a brush in a while, and so it feels weird to... Eunice wants to know how long you plan on staying in Hawaii. We want to stay here for as long as possible. <laughs> I mean, we've always said that we want Maui to be our home base and obviously, you know, make enough income so that we can go and visit friends and family, you know, in different parts of the mainland and also in other parts of the world. But for as long as God is willing, we want to stay here. We love Maui. Okay. Yeah, we've got some, I don't know if these are re real people. Gold Star wants a shout out until the volcanoes erupt. So I don't know if that's just someone randomly coming in or, and then someone says in a few months, we'll see director's cut of Endgame. Endgame, is that Avengers? Yeah. So I think maybe this could be like spam or something. Oh, <laughs> Babe, do you think you can pass me my lip balm? It's like right under my monitor. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So. Okay. Hi, Gold Star, if you're not a robot. Yeah. I don't understand the volcanoes thing, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, until the. Oh, are we going to stay here until the volcanoes erupt? Ooh. Okay. Mary, good night. Eunice. All right. Am I done with my face? Oh my gosh, no, I didn't even do did I do the other brow? I did. Okay, Gold Star wishes they were a robot. <laughs> so so you're, Gold Star. <laughs> so you're not a robot. Huh? <laughs> okay. Maybe you can ask the audience something. Let's go. Yeah, what can I ask you guys? Did you watch Avengers? Well, so that's something. Brandon has been talking about wanting to watch Avengers Endgame. And I have gotten in trouble the last few times we went to the movies because, like, you know, the seats recline and then I'm cold. So I always, like, bring extra socks and, like, warm hoodies and then just end up passing out. Um, so I think I'm banned from going to the movies unless I can promise that I will stay up and I can't ever promise that. So I just told Brandon to go watch Avengers by himself. Um, and it's three hours. That's, that's a huge commitment. So sorry, I will not be asking you about Avengers. I'll ask. Okay. Don't look at the Oh, topic. okay. Um, Anna asks, happy Monday. How was your weekend? Hi, Anna. Weekend was good. Um, it was very, very relaxing. I, usually try to do like a friend hang on a Saturday 
but like my Sundays, my ideal Sundays, I actually want to make a video about this soon. Like I have this routine and once I do the things that I plan to on Sundays, like I swear, I just feel so ready for the week. So yesterday was just a lot of relaxing, but it was also, um, you know, doing the things that I don't necessarily look forward to, but I always feel amazing after I do it, such as like cleaning the toilet and, you know, dusting surfaces and things like that. So it's, um, Maybe not the most exciting for some people, cleaning, but that's like my ideal, my ideal Sunday. And I have like a routine down. So thank you for asking. Uh, Julia asks, what's your favorite thing about living in Maui? What's my favorite thing? Well, just off the top of my head, it's so quiet. Like we're so used to living in the city. And I think for me, um, one of my favorite things to do every morning is as soon as I get out of bed and I make the bed, I come out and like open up all the blinds and just seeing all the different flowers and the palm trees and all the birds chirping. Like those are sounds that I'm not used to all the time. So I would say that's like an easy highlight for me every single day. And then yeah, I've always wanted to live in a place where there's warm weather. So I would say that's probably um, my two top things off the top of my head. And what else do I love about Maui? It's just everywhere we go, it's so breathtaking. Like I, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to snap my fingers and then realize it was a dream. Like I often feel like that here. I just feel so blessed to be able to live here right now yeah so laura alexandra says hi jen i love your morning chats makes me so happy to watch this even though it's evening in toronto but it's my birthday so this is awesome oh happy birthday happy birthday laura oh that's awesome anna says go watch avengers i've seen it twice lol <laughs> <laughs> and i said yeah, you're not allowed until we can get a sponsored <laughs> movie ticket. It's not happening. <laughs> Seriously, though, how... I don't mind, you know, you falling asleep through it. How are you going to ask me to promise? Like, I can't control it. If it if sleep comes over me, I oh. can't fight it, babe. Oh, hey, that's okay. That's easy, so you don't go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not allowed. <laughs> Unless it's a movie that I choose, but that's very infrequent. And a lot of times, if it's something that I want to see, you don't really want to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Amy, I'd like to ask you, what, what are y'all looking forward to in the next couple months? What are we looking forward to in the next couple of months? Oh, so Brandon's going to be, um, in San Francisco in July yes. because one of his like closest friends from college, he's doing his bachelor party there. Yeah. Hmm. So you're probably looking forward to that, right? Oh yeah. Big time. And then I guess the next couple months, oh my gosh, our website is coming along right now because Brandon's like really putting it together. We got our designs back. I love the logos. And so I just, you know, my friend Carly was like, hey, once you have your website and it starts looking like put together, you're going to feel way more like official and real. So I think I'm so excited about that. And I'm really excited about like getting the the groups going with the group sessions because I've been on fire for that. As I'm sure you guys know, if you've been watching my morning chats, I I feel like I've been talking about it a lot. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm actually looking forward to not traveling for a while. Like I, I kind of want to stay put um, and just <laughs> I feel like I need to enjoy Maui, you know? Like, I feel like we've been moving around a lot and, and just, um, yeah. Um, have you been able to surf often? Oh, we haven't gone since last November. We need to start doing that again. Um, how are the waves right now? Really good. Okay. Yeah. People have been commenting all week about how good it is. Really? Yeah. Maybe oh. we should go next week with... Uh, Carly and Taylor? Week. Yeah, yeah our friends have been like, come on, let's go surfing, let's go surfing. But the place they started going to now, um, Carly's told me some scary stories about how big the waves have been. But I think she went at a time last year when the waves were crazy. But apparently right now it's it's a nice, it's bearable for us. So, yeah. Uh, holy grail sunscreen for your face since moving. Holy grail. Oh, that's such a good question. <sighs> okay. Holy grail. You know, I don't have one that I would 
that I swear by entirely. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna grab it. I'm so bad I'm wearing pants. <laughs> So if I was not going into the water and if money wasn't an issue, I would use um, Josh Rosebrook's nutrient day cream, which is actually in my empties. I'll get into that. But this little guy is it's ninety five dollars. And I find that like with the new packaging, it's really tough to like get every little thing out. And this isn't waterproof. So if I'm just out and about, um, I would love to use that. But I wouldn't say that's holy grail, but maybe pretty close. And then I know I've talked about this. I love Think Sport. This is SPF uh, 50, but this is not for everyday use. Um, it's waterproof. And, you know, if I don't, if I'm not going in the water, I just feel like this is kind of intense for my skin. It My skin does tend to freak out pretty easily if there's too much on it. But I would say this is really great, especially for active hiking, surfing. Uh, my face has never burned from using this, but it is thick. So you got to really blend it in or you're going to be totally, totally like a mask. And then I've been using the super goop, um, the mineral sunscreen, and this is SPF 40. I wouldn't say it's Holy grail, but it's, it's working for me right now. And what I do is I will sometimes take a little bit of the Kosas tinted face oil or my skin tint, and I'll just put a few drops in just to get rid of the white, white cast. But it's not Holy Grail only because um, it's not 100% mineral. There is a chemical sunscreen in here, but it's it's working for me right now. If I find one that just blows me out of the water, like, trust me, I will share it with you in a heartbeat. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question uh, from you need a Bunny. I think that's Eunice. She, Eunice. Yeah. She was saying, is it? do you think it's too late for me to start on 25, but super not athletic? No. Oh my gosh. No. For surfing. Right? Yeah. For surfing. Yeah. You know, I think that's the common misconception or that's something that's a belief that I believe for a long time where it's like, I didn't play organized sports growing up. Like I'm not athletic. And so it's too late for me, but it's, it's never too late. I mean, I would definitely set expectations and make sure that, you know, you go into it slowly without trying to be a pro overnight. And I think that's the part that's frustrating. I feel like I'm always around people that are athletic and like Brandon. And so when they pick up things really quickly, I tend to kind of feel defeated. But yeah, expectation management, just take it slow. Like obviously don't try to do anything crazy under, I mean, unless you have an instructor or someone with you and they're kind of guiding you, but I absolutely don't think it's too late for you to play sports or, or learn a new skill like surfing. Yeah. Also, um, one of the things that was recommended recently was how if you're vacationing and yeah. surfing for a short period of time uh, and you want to get all the fun out of it without trying to learn like all the because it's hard paddle paddling is like one of the hardest things yes it's very exhausting uh, stand, stand up surfing surfboards. stand up paddling no stand up surfboards are probably the easiest way to like pick that up and have, uh, have fun okay so just fyi stand up surfing i don't know stand that up paddle boards. stand up paddle boards that's different from stand up surfing right? well you surf with the stand up paddle board so that's oh what it is, yeah. okay um so Emma. Emma says, I'm wondering what your plan is for Above the Waves. You're introing Big Five recently. What's next? By the way, love you guys. Oh, and she you. also said uh, something I'd love to let you know because your gratitude letters have inspired me and encouraged me to start my own podcast. Um, cool. One of my series of my podcasts has a gratitude part two. Would That's you start a podcast? Awesome. Okay, so the first question was, what's next for Above the Waves? Yeah. Um, so right now, Brandon is putting together the website. We just got our designs back from our wonderful graphic designer. He's putting in all the stuff. Like, I don't, I can't even tell you guys what he's doing. Like, I'm so impressed by everything he's, like, teaching himself. So there's that. And then the next big thing right now, we're launching or... I guess more openly launching the coaching experiment. And a big part of that is, you know, previously we were just um, 
we're trying to onboard people for our six week course. And within that course, um, there was a one on one coaching component built into it. Now, what we're doing now is just to be able to offer the one on one coaching aside from the course. So it's that it's more affordable. And I have been hearing recently that I didn't know this was a thing, but I've heard it's difficult to like get in touch with someone if you want that help, like whether it's a counselor or a therapist. And I didn't know that there was, um, yeah, there was such a roadblock in terms of like trying to schedule and see someone right away. I hear there's a big wait list in certain parts of the States and stuff. So yeah, we're hoping to make that more accessible. Um, I know how, trust me, I know when the need to talk to somebody when, you know, you need to either like externally process something or like want to talk to a neutral party, um, depending on what it is that's going on with you. So that's something we'd love to make more accessible. And then, yeah, the other part of that is to start putting women into groups together so that we can, you know, be accountable for each other. Also, like celebrate little wins. And yeah, like based on my research, too, it's like when you tell someone to share a goal publicly, like the chances of you hitting that increases to anywhere from like 85 to 90%. So that's something that I've been experimenting with that has, I've seen results from the people in the group and from myself as well. Oh my gosh. Like just knowing that I have to like report back and share what I've been working on has really been motivating me to like keep on top of like my goals and my projects. So I would say that's what I'm going to leave you with for above the waves. Speaking of, um, and this is slightly out of order okay. because it's, and I wanted to ask it because it's related, but um, okay. Carissa asks, mm -hmm. have you reached your, huh? Mm -hmm. I said, hi, Carissa. Uh -huh. Oh, have you reached your weight goal? Ooh, my weight goal. I have not. I am, okay, so my weight goal that I, what the number I want to hit is like 118 right now. And right now I'm floating between like 123 to 125. My body has been weird since the miscarriage. Like after, like while that was happening, I like shot up. I think I was like close to 130 and then I'm just slowly kind of coming back down. But I haven't been as strict with what I'm eating. I still haven't gotten my period. And so I'm just kind of letting, trying to be easy with my body. But yeah, 118 is still my goal. I haven't hit it yet. Um, I some water. water. Okay, okay, so. Uh, sorry, one second. I'm going to start moving into my empty soon. So okay. do you want to? One more question? Yeah. Okay. Um, what was the next one? So Madison says hi. Hi, Madison. And the question that Erica asks, mm -hmm. and this is a really good and possibly tough one. Okay. Jen, I really admire the way you do friendships. Do you have advice on sustaining meaningful long distance friendships? Ooh, meaningful and long distance. Okay, so I think the tricky thing with that is um, managing expectations. And I say that because um, I want to say the closest that I have friendships that I have that are far away, there's sort of an unspoken agreement there that we don't have to like constantly be in contact. Um, I'm not really good about like keeping in touch. I mean, that's why I think the newsletters are really great because that's still kind of like I can just write it once and then the people that want to sign up, they can and kind of keep up with me. But like for me, it's less about, I guess, having. I think if I kept putting pressure on myself to keep in touch, like that would really crush me. So whenever I am, you know, living my life and I think of someone like I will make sure even if it's like 10 seconds, I, I will shoot them a text just to let them know that I'm talking um, thinking about them. And then I would say the other big thing is to like schedule calls. <laughs> So that, <laughs> so you schedule a call. So it's less of like this, okay, we need to be talking all the time or, you know, I feel distant from you. I don't know what's going on. So yeah, managing expectations, like managing commitments, right? Putting stuff in the calendar, making sure you're blocking out that time. And then I think, um, I guess going back to the managing expectations thing is, you know, we all have go through different seasons in our lives. And right now, you know, someone might be like one of my friends might be in a really busy season while where she's trying to 
launch her business. And I have a friend in Korea in mind as I'm saying this, like, I know that she's not going to be as available to, um, you know, maybe like sit down and like catch up with me for a few hours. And so it's kind of being understanding of that. And same thing with us too, like Brandon and I, we, you know, we do the every three months, we send out like a big update to our closest family and friends, just kind of letting them know like what's going on with us. So otherwise, it's really tough, right, to keep continuing to explain things. And so, yeah, just letting people know, like here and there, like as you think about them, just shooting a quick text, I think really goes a long way. At least I feel that way when I'm on the receiving end of that, too. And I know my friends have expressed like they just appreciate me having done that, like when I think about them. So, yeah. OK, can I move on to my empty? Yes. Absolutely. OK. All right, guys. So thank you for <laughs> thank you for all your questions. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I do want to share my thoughts on these products. And um, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, if you are joining later on, um, I have not been meticulously keeping track of like when I started and finished up these products. So I'm just going to kind of give you my general thoughts on these products. And a lot of them are repurchases. So Okay, I'm going to start with, I have a list. The first one, um, this is the Biologique, Biologique Recherche, the French brand. Um, you guys know I love the Lotion P50. That's the exfoliating toner. Now, I wanted to try a few other things from this brand, and I went with um, Lay You, and this is a cleansing milk. So it's very, very gentle. It can be used as a first and second cleanse. Um I would definitely recommend a washcloth. And I would say that if you don't like the kind of oily film left over by like Moon's Aqui, which I love, I mean, I have sensitive dry skin. I like that extra barrier at the end, but if you want something that wipes clean, um, this might be good. And it's pretty affordable compared to the other things in their line. So there's that. For me, it didn't like, I guess, blow me out of the water in any way and so I I don't think I'll be picking up another one um, for a long time but I appreciated trying this okay and then let's see what's next oh this is exciting so here is my original riddle oil this is the this is the um the bottle that started it all this is my very first one I still remember when I got it it was in April 2016. We were celebrating our two-year anniversary. And I think I waited a month for it to arrive to Korea. And this is before I started. Uh, I reached out to the brand and was like, hey, can we do something together? I love you guys. So I bought this with my own money. And I think I was so precious with it. <laughs> so it lasted me a really long time, like almost three years. Um, but then since the original, um, I have discovered Sphinx, which is like hands down my favorite. If Sphinx didn't exist and it stayed discontinued like it was planning to, I would hop on this in a heartbeat. So you guys know I always recommend this. Um, I also have a coupon code in the description if you guys wanted to purchase it. I think it's 10% off. But yeah, I've introduced this to a lot of people as well. I know my sister has quite a number of bottles now. She just graduated over to Sphinx too from the original. Are you looking at me like this? Oh, I thought you want to say something. Okay. So next we're going to move on to oh, one of my favorite cleansers ever. I've got one in the full size and one in the little baby size. Um, let's see. This is 3.38 fluid ounces. And, you know, I try to travel with just a carry-on as much as I can, unless I'm going to a very cold climate and I need to pack a lot of winter clothes. So this is nice. It fits into my um, carry-on like toiletry bag. And then this one came in a set of like four or five other travel size ones and a little makeup pouch. It was a gift with purchase sort of thing. But yeah, I have lost track and I stopped keeping track of how many of the Aqui bottles I've been through. It's just something that I know I'm going to, it's going to be a staple for the rest of my life. And I really like that you can use this as a first cleanse and a second cleanse. A lot of times when I travel, I don't want to bring a washcloth with me. Cause I don't like, like, especially the last day of wherever I am, I don't want to pack a wet washcloth into my toiletry bag. And then, you know, it just being in the, 
like in the plane and just flying with me, right? Like wet and it just grosses me out. So I really like this because it can, I can wash it off without a washcloth. And so I finished two of these. I mean, at this point, I think I'm such a broken record when it comes to Aqui because I've talked about it so much, but there we go. Next, we're going to go with Aknari and this is Moon's um, serum. And what's interesting about Moon is that uh, the founder, Moon Emmy, she used to be a makeup artist. Like she did a lot of fashion shows like all over, I think maybe mostly in New York. I could be wrong, but um, because she wanted to create like skincare that would look really nice under makeup as well. Like you can really feel that with this product. Um, whenever I would put on, especially my glossy skin tint, on top of this serum, it just like smooths and glides on. I love this guy. And I have probably been through at least at least one other bottle of this. And this lasts a long time. I use like one pump at a time under my moisturizer. So yeah, love that. And then my last Moon product um, is the Anna Rose Hydrating Rose Toner. I'm not a rose person. Or maybe it's because I've smelled like a lot of synthetic ones that have other um, essential oils in it, like as fillers. Cause apparently like to get the true rose scent and the rose oil, it's actually very expensive. So the reason this is so costly is because of that reason. Um, I think there's, Munami was telling me too, like if when she purchases the oil by the pound, it's like some insane number. And a lot of people are wondering like why this rose toner is so expensive. It's that. It's not like heavily perfumed like the other uh, rose scented products I, I'm familiar with. And what I like about this is it's not one of those um, toners where after you use it, your skin feels like really tight and dry. I know a lot of people think that you're supposed to use a toner to like remove the excess makeup that your cleanser didn't remove. But if you're cleansing properly, you shouldn't have makeup left over on your face and you shouldn't see makeup residue like when you use a toner. This is more to like just balance out your skin again to restore the pH level and then have your skin be hydrated enough so that when you lay on your next product, your skin just absorbs everything, right? So I love this. I think um, this and Josh Rosebrook's Hydrating Accelerator, those two products like really changed my thoughts around toner. So I like that as well. And then let's see. Okay, Josh Rosebrook's Nutrient Day Cream. I've spoken about this before. Really like this product. I'm not a big fan of the packaging. It's expensive and I would like to, you know, get every last bit out of here, but it's quite difficult. Oh my gosh, look at this. I didn't even know I had this much product left. When I was done with this, I thought I was scraping out as much as I could, but I guess this sitting around in my empties box for like six months now, I'm probably not gonna use it because it's old, but that, that hurts me. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, if money wasn't an issue and Maybe if it was in the old packaging, I would love to pick up more of this. I'm just really hoping that Beauty Heroes features this again at some point. Okay, let's see. So next one is another Josh Rosebrook product. This is the Active Enzyme Exfoliator. It's an exfoliating facial mask. Now this one has, oh, look, look at that. I finished it and then I washed it out so it's so clean. But this one's... This one has the physical exfoliants in it. I forget what's in here. So um, all the products that I'm talking about, by the way, guys, they're listed down below if you wanted to go in and check the ingredients and stuff. But this, um, my skin is not as tolerant of physical exfoliators. So I would use this maybe once once a week at most or once every two weeks. That's more likely. And I would not use this on active acne because... I have done that and I have scrubbed a little bit too hard and I have like popped pimples that shouldn't have been popped and it, it hurt. So I would say unless your skin can really handle that, like I feel like you would really like this product, like that exfoliating action. So yeah, that was a Beauty Heroes discovery that I got to try. And then, ooh, I really liked this mask. This is the um, Hanua Skincare Moana Mask. 
It was a green mask, very gentle. I used to keep this in the fridge and I would mask with it once a week until I was done, but it would just be so cooling. It almost felt like the texture of the mask was this lotion, this creamy lotion, and I would just put it on. It felt so soothing, and when I washed it off, my skin just looked calm and soft, and the smell wasn't overbearing or anything. Yeah, I, I can't smell it anymore, but this is another one that I washed out because I might reuse this jar for something, and the price point on this is affordable compared to um, some of the other masks that I have in my collection. I think this is like about $34 or $38. So yeah, if you haven't used anything from Hanua yet, um, I can't use her face oil, serum, and sunscreen because there's a, a native plant fruit in there. Um, it's the noni plant that I'm allergic to. And so this is one of the few products that I can use from her line. And I like that. Let's see. Okay, then I have two Mahalo products. Oh, I love Mahalo. Definitely one of my favorite like cleaner beauty brands. Um, I got to experience through Beauty Heroes. And this one is um, actually Danielle, cruelty-free vegan beauty. This was her selection when Beauty Heroes chose uh, a few ambassadors and had them like curate their own boxes. This was my favorite, favorite box. Oh my gosh. Um, let's start with the unveil so this one was a cleansing balm like the color was this beautiful green it's like a jade green and it was a balm that just like melts in your hand and what i loved about this balm is that um again you you could either wash it off with a washcloth or it just rinsed clean with water which is really nice and it got everything off without stripping my skin it smells so good. I really like how all Mahalo products feel, look, and smell. So I would recommend this. Um, yeah, it says the ideal for first or second cleanse, balm to milk formula. And it's a Hawaiian brand. And then, oh, I was lucky enough to try, go through two of these, both through Beauty Heroes. And this is the bean antioxidant mask. So it's called the bean because there's vanilla bean, coffee bean, and cacao bean, I think. And those are the three that make up this, um, this mask. And it's like very dark in color. It's one of those, like, I feel like it just cleans my skin and just pulls out impurities again without being super harsh or anything. It smells amazing, like chocolate and coffee. And this is one that I was definitely very precious with. Um, I wanted to do it more than once a week. I think you can. Um, I think the founder, she also at some point used to deal with acne. So I feel like she formulates her products with that in mind. And so none of her products are ever like too harsh. And yeah, I just wanted this to last as long as possible. So I would only use it so often. But this is one of my favorite products and masks, hands down. Yeah. Okay, and then what do we have? Oh, okay, so someone asked earlier about my Holy Grail sunscreen. This used to be it for a long time. Not for my face. This is for the body. It's by Suntegrity, and this is the natural mineral sunscreen for body, and it's SPF 30. So oh, I love this. It smells like oranges because there's orange essential oil in here, but it didn't irritate my skin. Um, what I loved about this is that it's got only zinc oxide, so it's mineral and not chemical, and it smells good. It's not too thick and greasy. Like when it was time to wash it off, it came off nicely because it's not waterproof. That's the only thing. It's not water resistant, so I wouldn't recommend this for surfing or swimming, but if you are, you know, sometimes I just like to go to the beach and not go into the water. I just like to lay out and read or something. I love this for that. But if I'm going in, this isn't an empties, but if I'm going into the water or I'm doing something where I'm going to be sweating a lot, think sports, my sunscreen of choice. We've gone through so many tubes of this, right, babe? So many. Um, I remember somebody was like, oh, you're so lucky when you go to Hawaii. Um, you don't have to, you probably don't want to shop as much because it's like, you know, most people like don't wear pants here. Like sometimes I go to check the mail in my underwear 
okay, like boy shorts and a t-shirt. But you know, you do things in Hawaii like you wouldn't do in New York or Seoul. And my mom was like, yeah, it must be nice. Like you don't have to like want to go shopping. You just probably just want to wear bathing suit and be out all the time. But I would say all the money that we don't spend on clothes goes to sunscreen. So there's that. But yeah, I recommend this guy. It's expensive though. So that's the only drawback. And then we're going to go Egyptian magic. So this one has, I would say the texture is kind of similar to a Vaseline, but it's got olive oil. Um, I think bee propolis beeswax. So it's more, okay. Yeah. Beeswax, honey, bee pollen, prop propolis and Royal jelly. So apparently this one has like a celebrity following. It's like a very basic moisturizer. It can be a little bit greasy, but this is supposed to be great for like burns, irritation, like all sorts of things. And I bought this because it was on sale. I think it's normally like 40 something, but I found it for 30. And I think I had a sunburn. It's been a while since, since I've had this. But yeah, this is just like a no fuss, um, all purpose skin cream. There's nothing like bad I can say about it but I guess I mean it doesn't smell like anything really maybe a little bit like honey but yeah I um if I were to pick it again I'd probably just get it if it's on sale and then Stephanie says hi Jen hi Stephanie okay so Ayuna this I also got in a beauty heroes discovery I think it was a sidekick and this is the cream light. So they have two creams, cream one and cream two. It's light and rich. And this one is like the lighter of the two. And it was a good size to sample. The full size, it's $198. <laughs> um, and it has that, that signature Iuna scent. It's, it's very strong. So, you know, what I noticed is that I don't like like heavily fragrance things, especially in moisturizers, just because that's something that stays on my skin for a long time. And, you know, Ayuna, they have the scent for all of their products. And for whatever reason, I mind it as, I mean, not whatever reason, but I mind it less when I use like their mask because I know that I'm going to rinse it off. So that's the only drawback. And the fact that it's very, very luxurious, um, in terms of the experience is nice, but it is very expensive. And I just have other moisturizers that I like, like as much, if not more. So I don't think I'll ever be purchasing the full size of this guy. Okay, what else? All right, next, Jordan Samuel. I'm going to ask Brandon to join me for this because one's my empty and one's Brandon's empty. Watch, he's going to come in the frame. It's going to wash me out. I'm just going to become white and <laughs> no <laughs> oh my gosh because oh this gosh. focus is right I, I don't know that's really tough it's to not say. as bad but wow do i look pale okay yeah well i've been in the sun for like 10 hours that's over the true. weekend so this guy is Hi everybody. a <laughs> my comment moderator and also the CEO of Above the Waves. <laughs> <laughs> she really likes to. I do like the referring to you. Yeah. As I kind of mentioned. I mean, it was so just to give you backstory. Mm -hmm. I mentioned and I did that because I know that there's a lot of Jen doesn't deal well with too much chaos and pressure and yeah. big picture decision making, and that's kind of what a CEO does. Yeah. And so I just use the official title for most things. And anyway, I somehow landed the role. I hired myself. He did. <laughs> so now I just like to call him that. Yeah. But um, this is a moisturizer. It's called a performance cream. This is probably my second or third. This is Brandon's first. And you really liked this. I did. Right? I did. Do you want to tell me why you liked it? So <laughs> after hearing you describe all these products, I feel very insufficient no but you told me you liked it i just want to like don't yeah yeah so from what i've said um as some of you might know my regimen is that right yeah my skin care routine is basically um just water usually and jen has pressured me over the years to slowly incorporate certain things so now i actually use face soap 
at night only. And after to remove sunscreen, please, God, tell me you use sunscreen, a face wash to remove your sunscreen. Yeah. Now I do because we there's a there's a convenient bar of face soap in the shower. So. I had to make it as easy as possible. <laughs> I put one on the sink and he's like, well, but what about when I shower? So I had to get another one and put it in the shower. And then I have to constantly remind him, that's face soap. Please use it. <laughs> So clearly, I'm. I'm. Uh, my my opinion is going to be very valued here, but but you went through all of it. Yeah. So yeah. usually, like I put, I'm reminded to put on uh, lotion when my feel my skin feels a little tight. Yeah. Right. And so I always have something in there just to relieve that annoying pressure on my face skin. And from your wife. From my face skin. <laughs> and, well, not not as much. I feel like I can get away with that without you, you know, asking me about it. But mm-hmm. yeah, this one I liked because it was very. Um, you know, like you want that immediate relief of that skin tightness from being annoyingly dry. And, you know, compared to all the other lotions that I've used, this one felt more like I was just splashing. It's a some, hydration punch. Yeah, it was like it was like Mountain Dew. But like not the soda Mountain Dew, like the dew from the mountains. Oh, like, lit- you know? literal, like literal Mountain literal Dew. Literal Mountain Dew. Oh. And so I really liked that aspect of it. And, okay. You know. That's all I need. It's just that instant relief, and then I'm done. I don't know what else it does, or if it's good for me in the long term. But yeah, it's a peptide-rich yeah. cream. So it's I, what I want to point out, moisture-y. what I want to point out is that I got my sister on this as well, and I would say Julie and Brandon have more similar skin types than me. They both tend to have oilier skin, and Julie does not like anything heavy on her face. I even recommended the Hydrate Serum to go along with this for her, but she, like, never uses the serum. She only uses this, and she loves it. And you only really do need, like, a small amount, right? Mm -hmm. For me, though, because I have drier skin, I have a tough time using this on its own. Like, I have to um, mix it in with another face oil. So for that reason, um, it's not a product that I can just use on my own. I am using another moisturizer right now that I'll talk about when I finish with it. But yeah, I I have really liked this and I, I'm glad that you love it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Did you think about what you wanted to say about this before you sat down or was this just the whole Mountain Dew thing unplanned? Well, I, I thought about it feeling like Dew. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't know how else to describe it because I'm using a different lotion now, which isn't as yeah. moisture I like it because <laughs> it is. Well, it's maybe you feel like it's less hydrating but it's moisturizing it's a bit oilier yeah okay yeah. maybe that's the i don't know yeah so hydration is water and moisturizing is oil okay yeah so thank you you're welcome hi stephanie's and holy grail products whatever oh, jen leaves behind Brandon. no you know what this man gets to try some beautiful things because whatever doesn't work on my skin it goes to brandon okay Unless it's something where I know I have a specific friend that will love the product and I'll save it to gift it. If it's anything else that I've already opened and used, Brandon gets all of that. So he doesn't know. He doesn't care. (laughs) Oh, and he'll only really do all the steps if he's like lying in bed and I go there and I like put it on and massage it in. And he loves that whole thing. I do feel very loved. That's him. Okay, where did my box go? Your box of, oh, I'm sorry, I took it. Yeah, I've got one product left and it's nothing new. This is, oh my gosh, how many of these have I used, huh? Osmia Black Clay Facial Soap. It's like this big, actually it's not big, it's pretty small, but even though it's small, it's mighty. I used to like slice it up into thirds so that I can make it last longer. But apparently I was talking to Sarah, who is the founder of Osmia. She says, I don't need to do that. As long as you have like a proper, um, like a soap tray where your soap isn't sitting in a pool of water, then it will be, it'll, it should last as long. And I think it's anywhere from two to three months with proper care. But man, this is just one of my go-to face, facial soaps. But because of the, what's it? Australian, not Australian. There's a black clay in here. Mm, It's sulfur rich mud from the Dead Sea. And then there's black clay. I find that with this, um, it's, I do have to like moisturize pretty quickly. Otherwise, like it gives me that tight feeling that I don't like. And strangely, for whatever reason, the past month or two, I would get these little whiteheads um, right around my chin. It's actually really gross. Um, They're not even big whiteheads. They're so tiny and they they 
are like at the tip of the surface, like to the point where if I were to just like scratch it a little bit, like they would like pop, right? And it kind of almost looks like an allergic reaction for some reason. And I haven't like perfectly connected the dots, but I was using this and I was testing out another soap that has um, clay in it. And I'm wondering if for whatever reason, my skin's not tolerating that right now. So yes, I finished this and I finished multiple bars of this soap. I have one right now that's sitting in um, my little bin of face products. And I'm taking a break from this just so that I could slowly reintroduce it later. But other than this weird thing that's going on with me right now, I've used this for years and I love it. And I always recommend this to people. Um, even if you have um, sensitive skin and if you deal with breakouts and perioral, perioral dermatitis, that's um, it kind of looks like a rash, like acne and eczema, like a mix of those two things. And apparently this is really good for it. The founder, Sarah, she's gone through that herself. And I think um, fluoride toothpaste and too much caffeine can exacerbate that. And so if that's, that's a skin condition you might struggle with, like you might really like this. And this is another one that, you know, my skin, my sister has different skin than I do, but we have both dealt with acne. And this is one that she's loved as well. I don't know if I've ever had you use this. Yeah, I don't think so. If there's something that I really like, Brennan doesn't get to use it. So that's probably why he never used it. <laughs> uh, I ain't mad at that. <laughs> Stephanie says, I get exactly the same thing. Tiny white bumps right beneath the skin. A unifacial yeah. glow is helping get rid of them. Oh, okay. I have bottles of those. And I think I went the total opposite uh, dire direction of, okay, if my skin's having a reaction, I should probably take it easy. So I haven't been using P50 or a Yuna's facial, like ever since that has happened. Yeah, it's really weird. And I don't know why it started, but thank you. After my skin calms down and that's not an issue, I'm going to go back to using that. Okay. Is that everything? How are we on time? Oh, wrap up okay. I'm 15 minutes over. Oh my gosh, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, I want to do this regularly. Can you come here? Yeah. Do you think, okay, just quickly, should I? <laughs> Somebody yeah, so said, I was hi, thinking, what's going on? <laughs> yes, it's, hi, what's going on? Yeah. Maybe it's not like, what's hi. going on? Hey, what's going on? Oh, maybe it's like that. Are you asking what's happening here or like, what's up? <laughs> but anyway speaking of that there's a few questions i think one of them was really good about you know us working together how we decided to do that and how, how do we find the right balance oh. that was a good question oh, okay. um and just denise says your wifey of the year yes amen thank you denise. <laughs> uh, stephanie's asking about when you're going to be in san francisco and if you could do a meetup and so ah. um there's a lot of um will brian and you be visiting you guys in hawaii <laughs> not sure but um you know i think did you like the live session this was great yeah yeah i mean i'm a little bit i'm a little bit hot right now just i think because i'm nervous yeah um but i think but, you know we'll, we'll give it a shot for maybe at least another month um yeah, these are great questions i would love to address so yeah i'll start archiving the questions so that when we get started jen has some questions and and i think i like the moderating aspect of it because yeah. it's live and it's kind of fun for me yeah. so i'll also be joining and maybe pop in from time to time but this is great. i'll keep an archive of the questions we'll try to fix the lighting issue and yeah. maybe see if we can upgrade the quality of the video um i thought the audio was great oh yeah yeah oh, at least when i was listening to it so if you guys have oh well, stephanie says she'd love another live session that's great cool well, that's i'm so glad this was fun for you guys yeah so maybe same time next week or yeah i think yeah and if you guys can't make it at this time just know that it'll be on my channel so you can watch the replay daily um, live morning chats tiffany you're great daily. <laughs> <laughs> um okay cool so that's cool. all i wanted to offer up yeah so next monday 12 30. Yeah, I'll send out another uh, reminder in my gratitude uh, newsletter that goes out every Friday. So if you haven't signed up for that, th there's a link down below. But yeah, same time next week. And um, if you're watching this after the fact and you wanted to leave some questions in the comments, I'll also 
have that ready for the next round of morning chats. Awesome. So that we can make this as interactive and live fun as possible. Mm -hmm. Sounds cool. good. Yeah. Thank you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and the rest of the week. And yeah, you can also um, leave comments too, right? Even after the live chat's over. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget cool. to moisturize. <laughs> and watch you your heard face. it from me. <laughs> 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 Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>